Bonjour, madame et messieurs. Goede dag, mes frères et mes frères. And before I freak you all out, yes, this is going to be in English. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Karen Garcia, and today I have the great pleasure of speaking to y'all about Git, the tool loved and sometimes feared. Uh, so I know y'all just had lunch, so please try to stay awake. I'm going to try to be as engaging as possible. So yeah, thanks for being brave and trying to stay awake. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, I get a little recap about myself. Uh, I am indeed Karen Garcia. I'm your friendly Texan polyglot. I speak English, Spanish, German, Ruby, JavaScript, and you know, a little bit of Dutch and French. Uh, I am an, indeed a teaching assistant at the University of Texas uh, for their coding boot camp. Uh, I know they're popping up everywhere in the US. I'm not sure what the situation is here in Europe. But yeah, I had the great pleasure of teaching students who had no prior experience with code from you know, zero to 100, or quite close to 90, probably. Um, and so, yeah, we did full stack JavaScript, and yeah, I'm going to be focusing on the pros and cons of teaching Git to beginners. And so, and yeah, uh, and my day job is an implementation engineer at Bizarre Boys. Props to them for letting me work remotely this week. Yeah, so what we have today for our agenda, it, is teaching Git. So again, it's going to be the experience of teaching brand new people uh, what version control is and how they benefit from it, and how y'all can have. And I do, sorry, I do say y'all. I am from Texas, so very proud to use that word. Uh, how y'all can help others learn Git and uh, Git in other fields. How what what the benefits of using a version control system for other fields can be. Um, so, yeah, before we get started with a show of hands, how many of y'all have ever really messed up or crashed your app or site by pushing back a bit? Awesome. Great. Yeah, I've been there myself. And so uh, it can feel like this sometimes. You know, everything's on fire, and you know, you've got to stay calm and you know, revert that commit. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's definitely going to be one of the recurring themes throughout this presentation is that, you know, we're all human, all too human. Props to you if you got that Nietzsche reference. Uh, we, we make mistakes, um, especially people who are just brand new to Git. Uh, it, it can be a bit daunting at first, uh, but, you know, that, that's definitely something that with enough practice and time and good mentorship uh, can really help assuage all fears. And, uh, yeah. Hooray for Git. Uh, it's a really amazing you know, tool that we as developers get to use on a daily basis and helps keep our lives in order, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's definitely what we're going to cover. And so the good will be version control, simple commands, relatively, uh, collaborative coding, i.e. GitHub, Bitbucket, and other services that I may not be aware of. And the bad are going to be the cryptic errors, the command order sometimes, and collaborative coding, i.e. group projects. So yeah, that is uh, the pros and cons that we'll be going through in the following slides. So the good, version control. Students really appreciated the, the, the great utility of using uh, Git. And in terms of how we taught it was essentially, you know, uh, we, we gave them this example. Pretend you're writing a book and you and a, a, a few other authors are going to work collaboratively to write this great book and make sure that everything is working appropriately. So you have your, all your edits and, you know, sometimes you mess up so you can go back to edits that were working well, and yeah. So students really did appreciate that concept of, hey, I'm going to write writing code, and you know, if I mess up, I can go, go back to when the code actually worked. And so, as well as uh, the collaborative aspect of working with Git and GitHub or Bitbucket. Um, yeah, they, they really said, okay, this seems like a really cool tool until they actually worked on group projects. And uh, yeah, 
uh, that's, that's definitely one of the pros about what new people to get will be, is that they'll have an appreciation for that ability to save work, push up, and keep track of things. And yeah, simple commands, uh, usually you know, just one-liners, yeah. So get status, get add, get commit, and get push. These are the, at least for beginners, uh, the holy grail of what we try to, to teach and emphasize is that any time that you're making a change, you, know, you, you want to make sure that you are actually on the right repo and not some other random window with the same code. And so, yeah, we always pushed um, that git status is a really great way to check that everything that you edited was actually appropriately edited. And then, um, yeah. So relatively simple commands, and yeah, super happy that Git does pretty great in that, in that regard. Uh, collaborative coding, again, uh, working on code, awesome. Uh, you know, you have a group project that you're going to work with, so what a better way to work than having you know, a way to have your code live somewhere and then on the cloud, and then be able to Work collaboratively and try to not step on each other's foot, um, or you know, just send you know, copy save and email you co yourself copies. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely something that students definitely appreciate, and people in general who will be introduced to Git will appreciate the ability of easily, oh yeah, sometimes easily collaborate on the code. I, and then GitHub repos, uh, open source, and seeing other d developers' works. Uh, yeah, the, the repos are definitely something that the students really appreciated. They, uh, they, they're really grateful to have that ability to, you know, see how other developers worked, you know, see their timeline of how they were thinking of, you know, when they were making this tool or app or website, how, how their process worked. And so that's definitely one of the, the main benefits of being able to you know, convey that information to people who you're teaching get to is that, especially people who are just starting to learn how to code, is yeah that you can see how how many mistakes they they made uh, by the get commit messages. Sometimes <laughs> they can be colorful and you know laden with curse words, and yeah, uh, that's definitely one of the things that you know most students really appreciate it is the ability to see the thought process of more experienced developers. The bad cryptic errors. Oh my god, what did I just do? Uh, a lot of my students went on full-on panic mode uh, when they, whenever they got get conflicts. Uh, led to a lot of stressful situations, a lot of tears, and people were just, you know, my students were definitely in panic mode whenever they got something that, you know, was for, completely foreign to them. Thankfully, you know, as experienced developers in this crowd, uh, you know, you've, you've seen these errors before. So it's definitely important to, you know, make sure that they stay calm and go through the error together, see what it is, you know, Google it, and, you know, you'll eventually find the answer that you're looking for. And so, yeah, uh, that is definitely one of the things that, <laughs> that students definitely found not so good when working with Git. The bad, uh, sometimes the command order got confusing. Um, you know, again, that's definitely a double-edged sword when you have you know, simple commands, uh, but you don't really have that uh, GUI to, to help guide you to make the actual commands uh, that you need to do. So I, I, I noticed that a lot of the students would get the order confused, they would try to, you know, get pull instead of, uh, you know, just check that they had, you know, a git status, check that they were already up to date. And yeah, uh, the, the command order is definitely something that you can help lead um, in that regard is just, you know, whenever you're making changes, do git status. When you want to add those changes, git add the specific the specific files that you want it to push or get at all. You know, you want to save all your work and send it up to GitHub. And then, yeah, 
uh, git commit, put the message, and one thing that we really conveyed for messages, the git commit message, uh, was to be as descriptive as possible um, and as concise as can be. Uh, so it's definitely something that is achievable, and if you know, if, if you have any questions in regards to that, I'd be happy to talk afterwards. Uh, and what some of the tactics that we use was, you know, say what you what you were working on. So you're editing a CSS file, and you know, say that in your commit message, and then of course git push. So yeah, have try to establish that, you know, that basis of having, you know, a good way to make sure that your yeah, that, that your code is definitely going uh, up. Sorry, <laughs> this is my first presentation, so I'm getting a little nervous, but I digress. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so yeah, want to establish a good order and make sure that your student, whoever you're helping learn Git, has a concrete way of knowing how to push correctly. Uh, the bad collaborative coding. Um, <laughs> a lot of students definitely went, were, after their first projects working with another group, they went, they were like, no, I don't want to. It's, it's going to be a lot of stress. I don't want to get another error that I don't know how to fix. Uh, we're, we're all going to die. And so, yeah, uh, some, sometimes uh, group projects can definitely be a little bit stressful. And it's definitely something that you can help uh, with whoever you, that you'll maybe pro pair programming with is to assure them that nothing is going to go terribly awry. This was our, always our reaction when it, when it came to working with projects. No. Um, but fortunately, uh, with enough practice, they, they managed to persevere. Um, here we have a really great resource called Oh shit, good. Sorry if I need to get bleeped out for that. But uh, I think this is a really phenomenal resource. Uh, you know, uh, it's basically just a one pager site where it shows you the oh shit, git moments where something goes awry and, you know, this is how you can fix those issues. So definitely worth checking out. Uh, so, yeah, don't panic. Uh, you want to always make sure that. You remind people that you're teaching Git to, you know, make sure that they know that their code's always going to be backed up, and you know that that somebody else on your team also has a copy of the code. So that's a, that's the beauty about version control system like Git is that it's distributed, so everybody has a copy, and you're just because you made a simple mistake that doesn't mean that's going to be the end of the world necessarily. Um, Again, if you made a bad commit and you push something that broke everything, you can always revert back and you know establish you know peace and, and goodness in, in your world and life. <laughs> and so it's definitely something that uh, you know that you can revert that that's definitely super essential to to working with Git is that no matter what mistakes you, you do, you can always revert. Uh, and yeah, that's a uh, well, I do love these Octocats, by the way. This one's definitely my favorite, the Daft Punk Octocat. And uh, yeah, so helping others learn Git. Uh, focus on the basics, you know, just keep, make sure, make sure that you have a good basis of how you're going to teach up your, your fellow employees or your, your fellow coworkers or your students uh, that, that, you know, just focus on just how to push correctly, make sure that they review their code, and yeah, the beauty of working on, collaboratively on GitHub and, and on a team in general. Uh, assure, that, assure them that nothing is going to be super fatal. Uh, you know, again, that's the beauty about version control systems. You can always revert and practice, practice, practice. So again, that, that's definitely one of the things that you're going to face when you're new to anything, uh, you're going to make mistakes, and so the best way to you know, stop those mistakes is by practicing well. And yeah, that's uh, that's definitely something that we definitely did 
at, at the at UT, and we focus on you know teaching them well, giving them the basic commands that they needed, and making sure that they had enough time to practice both in group work and on their own personal repos uh, consistently. And so that's definitely some good advice I'd have for y'all to to help your fellow Git learners. And using Git in other fields. So this man right here writing is Lin Manuel Miranda. Uh, I love this man very much. He created uh, a, 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 a Hamilton, an American musical. Uh, highly recommend y'all listen to it on Spotify or whatever platform of choices. It's phenomenal. Uh, it's really awe-inspiring, and it's basically the telling of Alexander Hamilton, uh, one of the founding fathers of the United States, and super inspiring. And this is, this is going to lead on to how we can branch out Git in other fields. Uh, so people like Lin-Manuel Miranda could definitely benefit from having a version control system. So writers can avoid draft hell, so compare and contrast easily. Uh, their work and their commits, and just make sure that everything is in line. And I, I think it would definitely be a great benefit to editors and writers around the world, just because it, it allows that, that flexibility to you know, see side by side what changes have been made and how they can benefit from it. Uh, governments, uh, I think the EU lawmakers that are always you know, passing new bills and you know, trying to simultaneously create bills and, and translate them. Just imagine them, you know, having branches for the German, the Netherlands, uh, Swiss, no way, no, Switzerland's not part of the EU, my bad. <laughs> uh, France, Belgium, and other countries where, you know, that, that you can have that collaborative uh, aspect of, you know, of working with Git and, and create an, Creating laws, uh, that that definitely I think is one thing that I think with enough practice and time could be a really good and beneficial thing for our our governments around the world, but especially for the EU with all the langu various languages that y'all speak. Uh, schools uh, definitely think uh, teachers definitely can benefit from using version control system. So. When we created our curriculum, uh, we had a lot of changes, and we're still continuously upgrading and, you know, and, and editing our GitHub repo for our lesson plans. Uh, that is definitely one of the main benefits of us using Git uh, is that we can collaborate. Whenever we had a new idea, we can just simply, you know, at, uh, have a commit request to change the curriculum uh, according to what we wanted to teach or elaborate more on. And so I think public schools and private schools uh, would, could definitely use uh, get to, to have a more cohesive lesson plan. And you know, it, it would definitely, I think, be a benefit to them to uh, essentially yeah, work to get collaboratively and be able to revert to lesson plans that are that are what I'm trying to say, <laughs> that, that work well. And a, re a recap of today's talk is that Git is a fantastic tool. Uh, I definitely am a big advocate of Git and you know, the, the many benefits of using Git in the workplace. Uh, it, for me, I think it's definitely one of the things that has really you know, inspired me to help with open source resource projects and and help others who are not developers to help organize their lives and so it's it's easy enough to for you to teach somebody with you know a few hours of training and then have them do exercises to repeat and establish those good um, those good uh, habits uh, so definitely pro git and you know it's it's definitely a great tool to to work with um, and yeah, uh, like most things, takes practice, uh, both with Git and GitHub. Uh, you, you definitely can make sure that everybody uh, that you'd like, to, you'd like to help assist teach Git uh, can definitely benefit from it. And Git can and should be used in other industries. I know that's a bold statement, but 
that's that's just my opinion. Uh, you know, I, I think that most industries can and would benefit from using Git in the workplace just just because of the simple ability to collaborate as well as revert anything that may have, you know, not not gone well over the over the time. And yeah, that about does it. Thank you. Gracias. Danke. Merci. And bedankt. Uh, happy to talk with y'all over Just coffee or beer. Uh, and you can reach me at Garden Valeria. Uh, and use the Git hash, uh, GitHub, or the Git merge uh, hashtag for, for the, uh, the rest of it. Um, and without further ado, that concludes my presentation to y'all. Thank you so much. Do I have time for your Q&A? Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Definitely. So uh, the question was, have we tried using graph graphical interfaces when teaching Git? Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to do that. Uh, I think that's a really good idea. and. The reason being is because, especially for our, our classes, there were Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Um, due to the time limit of a boot camp, uh, we just wanted to make sure that they use a client line get, um, version. And to add the graphical interface, I think, would have introduced a bit more confusion sometimes. And so that's why we avoided doing it in the first place. But I think it would be worth testing out. Uh, I myself would really like to see if that works out. Uh, and yeah, I, I think that's a really good idea and something that's worth it in looking into. Oh, sorry, yes. Nice. And he does it now. And also at, uh, at work, and actually the Perfect. Yeah, so for those of y'all who weren't able to hear, she was just saying uh, that you know she taught her boyfriend who is at university, and he's using Git to write his papers and uh, assignments and whatnot. And so, yeah, great. It's awesome to hear that, that um, both in university level and in professional levels, that you can use Git to you know, to benefit uh, your company and schools and keep things in order. And yeah, that's really great to hear. And so glad to hear that. Uh, yes. Right. So. That, that harkens back to uh, one, a previous question that we got. Um, so I think for now, um, we have pretty great success with uh, the uh, terminal, the command line Git. And that definitely, you know, just because it, it focuses solely on what you're trying to do when you're committing uh, to, to GitHub. And so, uh, again, with enough practice and, you know, we had a uh, a good little information cheat sheet, so to speak, uh, for our students. Uh, that definitely helps them out in terms of what they're trying to do with the command line uh, versus a GUI, I think would also be a great benefit. Uh, something that I'm definitely going to start looking into. And uh, yeah, but once, once our students were finished with their second project, they were a lot more com comfortable with Git. And, we saw at least a 90% reduction of, um, you know, their panics of conflicts. They're like, oh no, we, we, 
yeah, like that was definitely after the second project, they did a spectacular job of learning from practicing and getting all these errors in the first place. And so, yeah, that was all sprightly command line Git. Any other questions? No? Well, that, well, that about does it for me. Again, thank you all so much for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference.